The Wall Street Journal reported in March that oil producers are producing less oil and may have reached their peak in the Permian Basin. Given the major positions of both Occidental Petroleum and Chevron in the Permian, would you please explain the rationale for Berkshire's significant holdings of both those companies, considering that future outlook for oil there? Well, there's no question. It's really interesting about oil, and Charlie knows way more about oil. Than I do. What, when did you buy that royalty in Kerr Bakersfield or wherever it is? But that was before I met you, right? Yes. No, it wasn't before. It was, but it was, yes, it was. It was just before. You're right. Yeah. And, and that goddamn royalty is still paying me $70,000 a year. What'd you pay for the $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's the opposite of the Permian. Uh, my dad bought 1000 or $1,500 worth of royalties uh, before he died in 1964. He left them to my mother. My mother left them to her two daughters. And my older sister died, and my younger sister's here today. And she gets these checks every month. And she knows about all these different fields and what they're producing. And that's the, that's the reality of half of the oil production or something around that in the United States. And then the other half uh, is shale. And, and, you know, if you've gone to the movies uh, and ever watched oil, You've never watched the things that are pumping out Charlie's royalties in, in California. You you see these you see these gushers of oil. Well, in the Permian, and I'm like, this should sink in on you. In the first day, the first day when you bring in a well, uh, you know it may be twelve thousand barrels, it may be fifteen thousand barrels, uh, and it's it even it's dangerous. At um, Occidental had one come in. To, I think in 19,000 barrels or something like that, one day. And in a year, year and a half, it, it becomes practically nothing. It, 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 it just, it's a different business, in effect. And the United States, it's interesting, we use whatever we use, maybe 11 or a fraction, well, we produce 11 or a fraction million barrels of oil equivalent a day, but if shale st stopped, I mean, it would drop to 6 million very fast. Well, just imagine taking 5 million barrels a day out of the production uh, in the world, and, uh, and then we're also taking down our strategic petroleum reserve. Uh, strategic petroleum reserve is the ultimate oil field. <laughs> you don't have to drill. It's just that we've got it. And it was supposed to be strategic, but, but it gets involved in politics. And uh, so... There's, there's all, when you talk about the oil business, you're talking about different kinds of businesses, basically. And, and we like Occidental's position in the Permian, and we'd, we wouldn't like that position. At, well, it got to minus, one day it got to minus $30 a barrel. That was crazy, of course. But, but if oil sells at, at X, you know, you do very well. And if it sells at half of X, you know, your costs are the same. And it doesn't change the production, and it doesn't work as well, but it also brings down the oil production of the United States very fast. So we don't know what oil prices will be, but we do very much like the Occidental position they have, and that's why we financed them a few years ago, and it looked like it was a terrible mistake uh, when the oil market just totally collapsed, and, and then it changed around, and we bought a lot of the common stock. Uh, in the last few months, they've reduced our preferred, which we, we don't like, obviously. But, I mean, but, but we'd, we'd be disappointed in them if they didn't reduce it. Uh, it's intelligent from their standpoint. So we've taken, of the $10 billion preferred, we've gotten maybe four or $500 million of it retired at 110% of par. But uh, Vicki Holub uh, is a... She's an extraordinary manager of Occidental. Her first job was with city service. That was the first stock I bought in 1942. Uh, she knows what happens beneath the surface. I know the, I know the math of it, but 
I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have the faintest idea what to do if I was in an oil field. I mean, I, I don't. I can dig two feet down. I I can't in my backyard, and I can. That's my. That's my understanding of subsoil <laughs> in the world. I can't picture the field that Charlie has been collecting that monthly check from, from 50 plus years, 60, uh, well, 60, 60 years roughly, uh, or my sister getting at various fields where they just keep pumping and pumping and pumping in. And uh, uh, we in the United States are lucky to have the ability to produce uh, the kind of oil we've got from shale, but it is not a long-term source uh, like you might think by, by watching movies about oil or something of the sort. Charlie, do you have anything? Yeah, it really dies fast, those shale, those shale wells. If you like quick death in your oil wells, we have them for you. No. But Occidental, uh, they're doing a lot of good things. Yeah, they do a lot of new wells, and the yeah, they, they they they're doing it at a profit, but it's it's a different kind of oil. It's business. just different. Yeah, yeah, and and that's true of almost half the oil produced in the United States. And uh, there's, there's times a lot of oil down there that nobody knows how to produce, and they've been working at it for like 50 years, but they worked at the, at the existing shale production for about 50 years before they figured it out. And it was weirdly complicated when they finally were able to do it. There's only one type of sand that works. Can you imagine a horizontal pipe? You know, that maybe a mile and a half or something. I, it's, it's just so different than what you think about. Uh, it goes laterally for three miles, two miles down. Yeah. How in the hell do you build two or three miles Laterally, when you're already two or three miles under the earth, they've, they've mastered a lot of very tricky technology to be able to get any oil out of these wells at all. Yeah. And we love the position with Occidental, and yeah. we love having Vicky run it, and uh, they've been... And there's a lot more oil down there if anybody can figure out another magic trick. That's all we need is another magic trick. But Occidental has some other things, too. Yes, yes, but... It, uh, but it, it, uh, the price of oil still is incredibly important in terms of the economics of short-lived oil. I mean, <laughs> no question about that. Uh, and, well, if it's... And we, we will, incidentally, uh, you know, I, there's speculation about us buying control. We're not going to buy control. <laughs> we, we don't want to... We've got the right management money. I mean, we can't... We, we wouldn't know what to do with it. Charlie wouldn't mind knowing what to do with an oil field. Admitting you're buying coal would be like going out and seeking to what, acquire a cancer or something. You can't even borrow to expand a coal mine now. It's really, it got very unfashionable. Yeah. And we think, frankly, some of the things that are ridiculous. And on both sides, on both, uh, in, in both extremes. I mean, it's just, I mean... You're dealing with physics, you're dealing with, um, you know, it's the politicization of, of positions on something that's enormously important in terms of energy. It's just, uh, it, it just lends itself to, to demagogues and, and fundraisers and advisory organizations and everybody in sight. But, uh, and we will make rational decisions and... We do not think it's un-American to be producing oil. <laughs> and there is no oil basin in the United States that compares to the Permian in terms of promise. Yeah, we were lucky. Well, I don't... We didn't know it was there until yes. you know, not that many years ago. It had sort of been used up. and the, They always knew the shale oil was there, but they thought it was going to stay unrecoverable forever. The second or third stock I bought was Texas Pacific Land Trust, and they owned all, three million acres down there in P, and they were they were grazing revenues of ten thousand a year or something like that. And they were sitting on this incredible amount of oil, and basically that company is now actually part of Chevron, and it went through Texaco and did all kinds of things, and 
and there's still a, a, there's still a Texas Pacific Land Trust, but a lot of that property is is fee fee owned by by uh, their minerals are owned by by Chevron, which is some advantage, but it's uh, well, it's an interesting subject. I'll put it that way, and and we will not be making any offer for control of of Occidental, but we love the shares we have. And we may or may not own more in the future, but but we certainly have warrants on on uh, which we got as part of the original deal on a very substantial amount of stock at around fifty nine dollars a share, and and those warrants last a long time. And, I'm glad we have them.